Hi, and welcome back to the Web Piano Teacher Artist Series podcast. Uh, thanks for tracking with us and going through every uh, song on mm -hmm. the Stranger album, which was by Billy Joel, released in 1977. We are on track number three, three. Just the Way You Are. So, okay. Sean, play it for us. All right. You know, I think people have mm. this um, image of us that like, oh, you must be like serenading me all the time with these <laughs> love songs. Yep. And like, as you were singing, I was like, literally, this is maybe the like third time in our entire like near 20 years of marriage that I've heard you like sing a love song. <laughs> Let me tell you, people. It's not for me. It's for you. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. And I, I used to, uh, when I was in, in grade school, you know, and junior high and high school would play and the girls would just flock, you know, anything I <laughs> played and sing. <laughs> so, and I, you always tell me you, that wouldn't have been you. Nope. <laughs> no, I would have been like, ugh, gag. Yeah. Which let me just 
go ahead and get the things about the song that I don't like okay. out of the way. Because I right. know a lot of people really love this song. Yes, I'm one of them. <laughs> Are you serious? Uh, yeah, I love this song. Okay. Interesting. I love. Well, I, we I, are very different people. Okay, it's not the the message of this. I, I love singing it. I love the sound of the chords. Okay, and the feeling okay. of singing it. it. Nothing. It has nothing to do with what the lyrics mean or anything. Well, well, let me just say the song itself. I'm I'm not in love with the keyboard sound. <laughs> I'm. Listen, everybody gets to like what they like and dislike what yeah, they dislike. Sure. So I really dislike the saxophone uh -huh. in this song like uh -huh. when you play it i like it much yeah better. but in fairness you general in general you don't like saxophone correct for some reason yeah i think i have like my parents played this kenny g kenny g CD, there we go yeah. cd in the 90s <laughs> like oh, i don't know uh -huh. i i there are things about me i i haven't evolved a whole lot I didn't yeah. like what I didn't like when I was a child. I uh -huh. still don't like uh -huh. it. And we, you know, we need to be real. If we, some songs we don't like, you know, we need to say it, not pretend we like everything. <laughs> yeah. I just, yeah. the whole vibe of this song, the feeling of this song. Yeah. I don't like uh -huh. what I do like about the song is the lyrics and not because they're so sentimental because they're absolutely not so sentimental. Uh -huh. At least my how I, the lens that I'm looking at this song through uh -huh. is even before I knew so much about Billy Joel and his relationship yeah with his wife his, his, at the time his first wife yes yeah the song just doesn't add up to be something that I feel like two people who are truly in love with each other I just feel <laughs> like this isn't it just sounds to me like a relation like this is the type of love that is falling apart and probably not going to get put back together. Yeah, that to me is the message of this song. But you know what's amazing to like me? Like we're grasping at straws yeah. here. What's amazing to me is that it's not uh, an album filled with because this is this is a common theme that bands and artists write their best songs when they're going through the greatest stress and turmoil, usually within the band or their personal lives, whatever. Is it isn't every song is not a bash song about her. It's not. You know, it's, it's, uh, and he's not like trying to get her cause he already has, he, you know, she yeah. married him. Um, and so I don't know I just feel like, uh, it's an honest, these are honest songs. They're not, yes. you know, cause when we did Fleetwood Mac, great songs, but you could feel the, you know, the, you know, the condescending putting down yes. of the other person. And you knew the, the order uh -huh. of the way they did the songs. It was like, this song was written and then this other song was written in response to that. Yeah. Yeah, which, so, I, which I love. That made uh -huh. a great album. Yeah. So, but this song, I and Billy Joel said he can't. To him, there's not a true love song unless there's a little bit of anxiety in it. Yeah. <laughs> and I think he's the master of, again, just synthesizing like human nature, because you really can't understand love unless you understand hate. Yeah. <laughs> And you can't really feel hate unless you understand the absence of love. Yeah. And I feel like <laughs> he really gets it in the song. So the thing I like about this song is what he's actually saying. Mm -hmm. And that it's not just a cheesy love song. <clears throat> yeah. So I um, I think people like this song because I don't, I'm, as far as the lyrics go, um, you know, we all constantly feel like we're not enough or we're we're uh, trying to, yeah, especially when you're out there in the dating world or something. And I got it. Uh, <laughs> what? I don't know what that's like. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, constantly trying to, you know, to be on and to be good enough or whatever. And to have a song where somebody says, I'll, I'll take you just the way you are. You know, that's, all, that's what we all want, right? Mm -hmm. We want someone to take us just the way we are. So I feel like the lyrics have, a, again, a human condition element where we're drawn to it because everyone experiences that. I love the chords. I think I love the keyboard sound. I do not like that wall of sound that starts coming in the second verse. It just sounds like someone's pressing down, like someone put a, uh, you know, a kid, a toddler in the corner is pushing down on the synthesizer <laughs> pad and you're like, turn that off. Um, I don't know whose idea that was, but I do not like that. That wall, you know what I'm talking about? I do. Where it just starts coming in and yeah. it's not even, sometimes it matches the course, sometimes it doesn't, but it just, it's to me, it really it takes away from the song. I don't know. You know what the thinking was there, but I've never, I've never grown to like it either. I was like, ah, you know, 
I wish it wasn't there. Yeah. Um, but I do love the the chords. I mean, these are starts off with D, and then where do I where do I go? Most people would go here or here, you know, or maybe even here. But he goes. I love, I'm like, where did he come up with that? That is a what is what in the world? That's a sharp four half diminished G sharp, you know. Um, oh my gosh! And then he just slides down to the four chord, you know. And then he has this na na minor. And then this is the one I love. Ooh, that's the same chord progression when it goes ooh. Yeah. Na 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 na. And then ooh or uh, na 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 na. I call that the Billy Billy Joel three. Yeah. Because he goes uh, to get to the four chord, you go minor two seven, major five seven. Da da da. Listen for that when you hear Billy Joel. It shows up all the time, and I love it. I know other artists do it, but to me, he he always does it in the coolest places. I love that. Na, 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 na. Minor four. It's just uh, a chord smorgasbord. <laughs> Smorgasbord. I was trying um, to come up with that, and then I decided yeah. I wasn't going to try it. <laughs> so to me, the, it's very appealing to play because you, you get to play all these cool chords, but they're not all spread out. You can just change one finger, and they're all right in the same place. Like, hear this top note? <laughs> It works in every chord. It's almost like he was saying, all right, there's my F sharp and my fifth finger. Let me see what I can do with everything else. And you don't have to, you can sound like you know all these chords, but you don't have to move that much to get there. You don't have to look at your hands. You can just. You know, I know because this was in the book that he wrote this song for his Elizabeth, for her birthday. They had no money. Okay. I mean, again, this was. He's about to get money, though. He's about yeah. to get some <laughs> money. money. And, I mean, he wrote this before they started yeah. recording this album. Yeah. So they had a period where they, they had no money. And so he, which this is sweet. Yeah. We have no money, so I'm going to make you something. I'm going to write you something. I, I like that idea. Okay. Um, but he even said he should have known. Like, he did this sweet, sentimental thing, and then she said... When he played it for her and said, happy birthday, I yeah. love you. And she's like, do I also get the recording rights to this song? Oh, my God. So, like. Flag. <laughs> flag. <laughs> Run, so, he, he was kind of like. <laughs> which, I guess she knew what a hit was. Yeah. Apparently, she was a good businesswoman. Apparently. Okay. We'll hear about that in Always a uh -huh, Woman. Yeah. Uh, but. If I'm thinking about, oh, he's right, he needs to, like, come up with a quick birthday gift. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun, you know, like, okay, here's here's a chord. I'm just going to build off of it right around here. And yeah. I guess for him, maybe not potentially put too much thought because he's just working right there in that You're one right. spot. Yes, yes. And, but I think sometimes, and I've learned this um, with listening to a lot of Elton John stuff, when you have these restraints put on you, you're trying to fit within something because he would receive the lyrics mm -hmm. and then he would make the music work to the lyrics, which sure. I think is challenging. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Billy Joel maybe was working under this time thing of like, I got to give this gift. <laughs> and then originally, too, he said in an interview I watched that it it was originally like a cha-cha. Okay. Rhythm. Like you kind of hear that a little bit when the when the and I believe he guitar comes. You in. can find this interview on YouTube. He goes, he plays it how he originally, which is amazing to me because I guess when you come up with it, you, you can remember, remember how you originally came up with it. Yeah, even after playing it a million times in uh, but, the new yeah. way. Yeah, but he said that he brought it to the band. And they were like, hates it, like <laughs> terrible. Yeah. They all the band also hated this song. Uh, they didn't think. Well, they just were like, it's too cheesy. You're going to be pegged as like a wedding singer. It's going to become okay. everybody's wedding song. So if this was your wedding song, I hope you're still married. <laughs> yeah. Because, it, again, <laughs> it's a little grasping. Uh -huh. It seems like that theme kind of comes up again and again where he starts it out a certain way and then he changes the style of it. Like it's still the same song, but he, like on Anthony's song, mm -hmm. same thing. 
Yes. So and he'd yeah, a lot of songs. There'll be when we get to the last track of this album. Gosh, I just forgot the name of it. Everybody has a dream. Yes. I remembered something. <laughs> Note. Check. Yes. Uh he had a different style in mind for that song mm-hmm. and then changed it because he he was looking at this as the overall fit of the album. So he does that too. He doesn't just think individual songs. Yeah. He thinks individuals, I mean, he wants every individual song to be good, but within the context of the entire yeah. album. Again, Beethoven writing the symphony where all the parts, Beethoven was the first one to really try to connect all the movements of the symphony to where they were mm-hmm. one cohesive thing with key and even with melodic element. No one had done that before he did. And so again, I see a, an element that he, he cares about the whole album, not just that one song. It's all got to work together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. So you said you liked the chords of this song, the yeah. feel. Uh-huh. So I've heard you talk before about how chords and even like how the chords are f- put together yeah. Yeah. D- have like a familiarity uh-huh. to you. They have a uh-huh. feeling attached to them. Cause some people will say like, oh, I feel like since the, they see the chords or the notes as, as colors, but you say you see them as feelings. Or I feel them as feelings. Yeah, yeah. I don't, <clears throat> I don't, uh, don't see colors really. Sometimes, maybe a little, but it's not. It's not overwhelming at all. But it's yeah, it's the feeling. So do these um, chords give you romantic feelings? Not romantic, just <laughs> happy. Oh well, like that's fun. good. Like it's just happy. That's why if you if you change the key. And did it and say C, you know, put it down so maybe your voice isn't so high anymore. And you need to go down and see. It would just lose everything to me. It would be like, like, you know, imagine your favorite office uh, sitcom. Yeah. Like you, what's your favorite one? You like the? Oh, I like the dinner party. The dinner party on the office, the, the show. You know, you know. Um, the American. Now imagine version, yeah. you're going to watch that favorite episode, which you watch from time to time, yeah. but then they bring in all these different actors to do it instead of Steve Carell, instead of, uh, you know, Dwight. And, and you have other characters playing the characters that you love. How would you feel about that? I don't know. I'd give it a chance, but I probably <laughs> wouldn't like it. No, that's how, that's what it's like to me to change the key of something. I would be so distracted by making comparisons that I wouldn't even. Yeah. Be able to enjoy it. That's exactly how I would feel if I were to change the key of this. So this chord, you could do the same thing in a lower key, but it doesn't, you know, give me the jollies <laughs> or give me the happiness. Well, I'm, I was, <laughs> I was just of curious, D. like, does this, song, you know, I'm glad this song makes you feel happy. Yeah, when you go to that G sharp, half diminished, that's just, I don't know, it's just rays of sunshine, you know, the whole every chord and it's just cool the way it moves around and i like the way it makes me feel that's why i like music that's how i judge it do i like the way i feel and a lot of times the chords are what does that and if it's in a key is it mostly just piano no so like that's saxophone in this song i like saxophone and i you know grew up with it you know billy joel had it and uh bruce springsteen has it and i just grew up hearing it in I the don't 80s i hate saxophone yeah i hate i like i don't know what to call it more like a dirty sounding saxophone yeah. you know what i mean like the new orleans style yeah kind of rasp, like a the raspy yeah yeah um i guess i mean i like that too but uh you know growing up in you didn't grow up in the 80s but i did well you kind of did but not not as much as I do. I just, so I like what I like. And <laughs> saxophone's not it. Yeah, but I, to me, it just goes with it. If you take away the saxophone out of this, to me, you just, I think you lose something. <clears throat> I wish I, I wish I had a little more acceptance. Yeah, I feel totally. If they took the saxophone out, I would like the song a lot. Yeah, more. the way you feel about saxophone is the way I feel about flute. And Jeff will tell. Jeff, well. tell <laughs> what what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like I can let the flute go a little more. Yeah. It's still kind of yeah. weird. Yeah. But, but to me, I love saxophone. Yeah. And I, I think it fit, totally goes with Billy Joel's music. And to me, if you took it away, then it, you're taking away I feel something like very it, important. For me, if they took the saxophone away and replaced it with like a really great electric guitar sound. Yeah. That'd be cool. Well, I know you love electric guitar. I do. And this sound that he uses, I don't know if this is exact. This is close. I mean, I was just picking around. On I the, like the this bank. sound better. 
to me. Hear the boom, 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 boom. That's really cool. In fact, I think this sound has maybe improved a little bit over what's on the the original because now we have you know all these keyboards that can can really um, give you some effects on and things. But I even added an effect because it didn't have that on there when I first put it on. It was that. I was like, oh, I wonder what this effect would do if I put it on. And here it is. The little like tremolo thing. You know, wah, wah, yeah. wah, wah. to me, this sounds like um, if like Van Halen was maybe <laughs> doing this song. Yeah. It's got a little bit of an edge to it. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. A little, right. It does. It has a little bit more of edge of the other. But, you know, had Billy Joel had access to this, he might have chosen this song. You didn't have as many choices back then. Right. As you do uh, now. And, and even in later on in the 80s. But, you know, I guess, you know, some people call it cheesy, but it was on the radio all the time. It's still on the radio all the time. And I, I like it. I just, I love the chords. I don't dislike it. Yeah. And I also love singing it because you get to do the, ha, you get to, you know, you get to the vibrato and everything, which, which normally you don't put in a pop That's rock true. song. So they so. weren't going to record or... I'm not saying he wasn't going to do it, but he was really struggling when they in the process of putting this album together. Yeah. And he was in a recording studio and working in the studio also was Linda Ronstadt. Oh, my gosh. And Phoebe Snow. And so they came in and were listening and they were like, oh, you've got to record this song. It's so great. So they loved it. So he was on the fence about it. He was on the fence. Oh, okay. And because... He didn't, because it really did have that wedding singer vibe. And again, yeah. he wasn't, this isn't the Billy Joel that gets to do whatever he wants yet. Yeah. This is the Billy Joel who's still trying to get the big hits. Yeah. I mean, even though he didn't really try to get the big hits, but you know what I mean. And so anyway, their input and the producer was like, okay, Billy, women know a lot more about this yeah. stuff than uh, we do. I was going to say. So we gotta, we're going to put it on the album for sure. Yeah. And so I think that's kind of an interesting I would, yeah, thing. Yeah, I would think probably women like this song more than men. Although I went to a Billy Joel concert one time and he was doing, you know, pressure and why do I go to yeah. extremes and some rocking hits. And then he goes, all right, we're going to slow it down. He said, guys, you can go. You know, take a smoke or, <laughs> or go get go to the, go get something to eat or something while I do this slow set, and everybody kind of laughed. Uh, nobody left. Uh, I mean, and the guys were getting into him singing this. You know, he did. I don't know if he did this particular one, but he did. Uh, I, 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 it feels like he did, uh, but he did a, a slower set. Always a woman, of course. He did that one, uh, but no one left. You know, and they were singing it just like the the women were. So maybe men secretly like this one. <laughs> I mean, you don't secretly like <laughs> yeah. it. And I don't secretly <clears throat> like it either. <laughs> but it, I mean, it's a good song. Yeah. I thought that was funny, though, that he was like, we can't argue with these two women. Yeah. And a part of my love for it, if I weren't playing it, I don't think I would have near as much fun with it. Because it's fun to play. It's fun to play and sing. And See, and I can't really I sing the song either because yeah. it's not really in a in comfortable range. range for me. So I can't mm -hmm. participate with it either, but I don't know that that would help. Well, and what do I know about hit songs? Because this song was like song of the year in 1978. Yeah. So It was? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So what do I know? Yeah. Sometimes I think that has to do with the the time the song came out and what was pushed and what wasn't because sometimes hits are just... You know, you never know how no, that's going to happen. I, I think a lot of people just absolutely love this song. He also got a lot of flack for it from the feminist movement. Oh. <laughs> you know, okay. because, which, again, you can take, you can read and listen to anything through your own personal lens. Yeah. Of what you deal with and what you know. I'm trying to figure out how anyone could be offended by the song. <laughs> because in the line, I don't want clever conversation. Okay. I never want to work that hard. That he didn't want a smart, intelligent woman. He just wanted her to be okay, like dumb and not smarter than him. Which I oh, give me a break. Cannot. Okay. <laughs> I can't really read that at all. Yeah. In, if you're looking that. for something to be offended about, I guess you can can find something if you're looking for it. 
but I'm offended. I don't know. That's just dudes. The, uh, that's a saxophone. That's no. a dude. I mean, I it, think it's guys. actually yeah. quite <laughs> nice. Uh huh. You know, <laughs> but again, I'm looking at it through the lens of she was building a business. She was uh-huh. very successful, and yeah. he gives her a lot of credit. She's yeah. the reason she fought hard for him to be able to in concerts not sit behind the piano the whole time to get him you've got to get him out from behind the piano he is not just the piano guy he's a performer he's amazing at that so she really fought for him yeah to get a lot of the things that have made him super successful sounds like though somewhere along the way the his success became more important to her than him possibly and that might have been the thing all along I yeah. don't know these people. They yeah. are not my friends. I, you we know. can guess. We can have fun. But, <laughs> I mean, in the beginning, she was his best friend's wife. Oh, did not know that. Well, how, yeah. can you, how can you help that little juicy bit? Well, I don't bit? know. <laughs> so, and they all were living in a house together. Because, like, Billy, they took him in after his, like, hard times yeah. in his early yeah. 20s. And so he was kind of living with them. Okay. And they had a son. And then their relationship was maybe falling apart. I don't really know. But then him and Billy Joel and her started yeah. getting together. And then uh-huh. there was this whole love okay. triangle thing. And it was like it was like a whole thing. Yeah. So, you know, it just didn't start in the best of ways. Yeah. I don't think their relationship started out with everything going yeah. for them. Yeah. Look at these songs we got. We got these these awesome songs. Uh, in a, we referenced this in the Stranger episode, but a Howard Stern interview, where then Howard Stern, you know, is like trying to tell Billy Joel what this song means. Uh-huh. This song? Yeah. Okay. Because it, of course, Billy Joel just says, you know, it is what it is. Very, okay. you know. And Howard Stern's like, "Can I tell you what I think it means?" <laughs> I love that about him. He just, I know. I, mean, I would never say that. Well, him. and Billy Joel just <laughs> seemed like, yes. Tell me. And not, okay. you know, and yeah. then Howard Stern says, I really think this is what you want to hear. That you're saying this is what you would, you want to tell somebody. But in reality, this is what you want to hear. Uh-huh. You want someone to love you just the, the way, way you are. are. Uh-huh. Not for the music, not for the fame, oh, not wow. for the you want to. That's deep. <laughs> well, and Billy Joel like sat for a minute and considered it and said, well, you know, maybe, I don't know. I haven't, uh-huh. I haven't thought about it. And anyway, I've thought that was, I, I respect that he didn't just be like, oh, you're crazy. You don't know. You don't know me. No. Yeah. yeah. Um, but he did say in the book that I read that part of what he wrote, I mean, he said, I just wanted to tell somebody, I love you just the way you are. And he said, everybody wants to hear that. I've always wanted to yeah. hear that. And again, he had this estranged relationship with his father and yeah i think he loved his mother dearly but i think she was a bit eccentric as well and he was just different from everybody in his neighborhood and you know yeah i thought that was interesting i thought what was (laughs) what was truly interesting to me is that billy joel it like didn't just um dismiss it Mm -hmm. and he gave it some consideration or what, oh yeah, and he never comes off as this all-knowing, knowledgeable. I'm here, and you're way down here, like, like some of the artists do. You know, they come on an interview and they get they were wearing sunglasses and you know just that kind of. He's always just talk to people like people, and anything they had to say, he would you know listen. And I never, I always hear him say, "Well, I never thought of that before." Maybe you I know? have. I did watch some of his very early interviews. Yeah, and I still don't. I can see why people. Why he got a bad rap for being kind of a jerk mm-hmm. or just egotistical. I mean, but like, let's, the, he was like in his early 20s. So we have to be a little yes, forgiving of people uh, in their early 20s. Yeah. <laughs> but he, he's very sure of himself also. And I feel like he doesn't feel the need to over explain the songs themselves, uh-huh. what they're saying and yeah. the music. I mean, he will share. He he, I love this about in a lot of his interviews. He shares his process. 
yeah. on how he's playing. And I think that's why people are so obsessed with him because he makes the information available Yeah, for, because people are fascinated by... Yeah, I'm, I'm one of them. I am too. When people are at the top, we're fascinated with why they're at the top. <laughs> what, when is uh, Scenes coming up? Is that the next one? Yes. Okay, I'm going to have to work on that one. That's, you have a week. That's like three or four songs in one. <laughs> it is. I can't wait to talk <clears throat> about that song. Yeah. Anyway, well, we appreciate you guys listening we with do. us. We do, yes. And if you want to like this video mm. and... And comment. We, we want to know what you guys are thinking. Put a comment. We'll respond. We will. Anyway, Sean, play, play it for a little bit for us. I don't know the words. Don't go changing to try and please me. Take it over. 